Alrighty, so we're just back from... Uh, shit, what's her name? Janice. Janice. Losing her mind and degrading over time. And us vomiting everywhere from drinking... Oh, gosh. Who knows, really? Eating eating cookies with water on them. I forgot about that. It yeah, we, me really we, upset. Ate, we ate uh, oh, no. irrigation water cookies. Ew. And that could, that could have been why you threw up. Although it seemed like a fast reaction. Or it could have been... Well, uh, it, having a moment with the hallucinatory spider that may or may not have existed. Or like maybe he freaked out because he saw the spider, or maybe there was no spider and he had just lost it. I mean, a lot of food poisoning is relatively like immediate, which is like how you know if you have like a, a stomach bug or if you have food poisoning is like you will it will be pretty soon yeah. that you will get sick. I'm, I'm getting fully immersed because I probably had food poisoning yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. What did you eat? Uh, I ordered a sandwich. And oh my gosh, okay, I was gonna ask, it, it, it's from Ike's, right? Yeah. I was gonna ask you if you liked Ike's, because I don't, I have like, I don't like them. Oh no. <laughs> no, no offense, sorry to, sorry to Fuck talk you, company. Fuck you, Ike. Well, no, 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 Loser. no, I just, I've had a, I've heard a lot of Stupid, people. Stupid, bald ass Mr. Cleanhead. <laughs> well, I just hear everyone's like, oh man, they have too much sauce, or like, the, I've heard a lot of weird complaints about their sandwiches, and like, the structural integrity of them, and just them having weird issues, like, very specific ones, so I was gonna ask you, like, oh, what did you think of it? Because I'm curious about your opinion. I thought it was pretty alright, but I had the sandwich, and specifically, uh, before streaming last night, I, was it, I had the, I had the, already had the Pepsi with the, with the Ikes. And then I kind of just absentmindedly grabbed a Red Bull and drank it, and then before registering what I had just done, or I'm like, why am I having a Red Bull this late? And why am I having a Red Bull right after a Pepsi? Like, what have I done? That does seem like a gross. Thing. I felt fine for the two hour stream of Escape Simulator, and then I kind of just felt like shit for the rest of the evening. And then I I went to bed at like two, but I couldn't get I couldn't get to sleep, so I'm just laying in bed until like four thirty. But like, did I how how bad did I fuck up? Even did you, though did you puke it all or anything? Even though I drank it at like six, so like I had like eight hours between six and two for like the caffeine to, to wear off, and I, I'm like, is that is that why I'm still up? What's going on? I think I might have fallen asleep finally around like four thirty. I suddenly woke up at like six, and I felt in like a weird contorted position, and I felt like my throat like coating itself, and I'm like, oh no 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 no, and I like ran to the oh, bathroom. Yeah. It's like I have not had that feeling in like two or three years, I think. But I'm like, this is the one where that's that that specific feeling where you're like, oh, I'm definitely going to throw up. Like this is the weird, like very the, the weird extended like prep that you're that happens beforehand where you're like, this is just inevitable. Here it I, comes. I hate so I hate that nauseous feeling so much that if I have a even a hunch that I'm gonna throw up later, I just make myself throw up. <laughs> I like to get it over with. I hate that like in between of like waiting. Yeah. Man, oh my gosh. Yeah, there's been a couple times where it's just like, or like if you're in a, an inconvenient position where it's like, I can't throw up right now, like in front of people or something. Yeah. And you're like, okay, like, like keep it under control until you get to. Uh, I. But so I just, I, I just kind of at that point, I just hung around the house for a while, for like half an hour, just staying upright and drinking water, just trying to get good enough to like sleep again. Then fucking Raya wakes me up at like nine in the morning, just barking constantly. So I let her and Kiba out and feed them because we're on dog duty this week because their owners are gone. And I don't want to, and I don't want them making a mess or whatever. And so I, I, I didn't finally drag myself out of bed for the final time until like twelve thirty, and I have no idea. I, I, I'm at the point where I have no idea how much of that was collectively sleep or how it went. But you just cut your losses, and you're like, "Let's go, <laughs> the night's over, time to move on." Maybe tomorrow will be better. <laughs> so I'm feeling chase right now. I had like a really weird experience where I, I went to Jamba Juice and I got one of their green juice smoothie things. It was like a ginger thing. And the guy added a vitamin shot, but I forget how nauseous vitamins make me. Like, I'm one of those people that throws up if I take a multivitamin without eating a bunch of food. No. Oh. Like, when, you, when you like dry snake swallow your pills. Well, no, I mean, even just even just if I drink water, even with it, it's just like it makes me throw up. Like mm. some people have that problem. Like it's it. I think I think a lot of people do. Tell us in the comments. The instructions do say to eat it with stuff. But no, but I had a vitamin shot, and then I went to work, and I puked up green in front of my coworker, and it scared uh. her so much that she sent me home. And I was like, cool, I have the day off, and I was fine <laughs> the rest of the day. It's you just, goosebumpster. I just, I just looked at her the right in the, the face, ooze or some shit. and I was like, Debbie? Like, yeah? I'm like, I'm gonna puke, like, right now. And then I just lean over, and I puke into a bucket. And she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and it was during COVID. 
so she like was really scared of me because she thought I was like contagious. You know, she's like, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> and so she like sent me home immediately, and I was like, score, thanks, Jamba Juice. Hope you guys are all enjoying the barf episode. Here we go. <laughs> My brother yeah, I and I have a problem where we throw up loudly. <laughs> You guys, oh, it's true, it's, actually. It's I, can, just, I can, I can, I've I don't, that. I didn't really think about it for a long time, but I think, I don't think everyone throws up loudly, but we kind of like scream barf. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Like, and this has, this has had consequences a few times. Cause, uh, this is a story. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a there's, I have two embarrassing barf stories. Where no one was seeing me, it happened, but they could, ha but they knew it was happening because of that. One was uh, I was in, in like my history class in college. Oh God! And it was like one of those classrooms that's not like in the multi mul like multi floor building, but instead it's just like a weird standalone thing on the outskirts like a, of the college. Like a portable. Yeah. yeah. And so I like quickly left the room. And then I was like, I'm not, I'm not making any further. So I just threw up in the dirt, like, around <laughs> the corner of the building. Like, off, like, not on the sidewalk, the path you take everywhere, but just, like, in the cracked, like, dirt that's, like, next to the building. That's, like, there's nowhere else to go. We're not near anything. Uh, and, like, at one point, the teacher comes out and pats me on the back. And I'm like, oh, fuck. This means that they can hear me. It's a good thing this is a class with 120 people, like, just a comical amount of people, and I just left, like, abruptly in a non- like, in, in a way that didn't really call attention to myself. So, no one- if, if, so, if- even if everyone's now thinking about what's happening outside this room because they can hear me, no one knows me in this classroom, and no one- They're not gonna would, remember who no one would, No one would connect me leaving with that sound in that- because it's happened in the wrong order to be memorable, so no one really knows who's doing this right now, so I felt pretty safe coming back the next day and not being, like, recognized and stuff like that. I also didn't have anything with me, so I just didn't- I didn't have to go back in to get my stuff. I just left. Oh yeah, I would just- I would just dip, uh, for sure. Because I went to a lot of college classes with just nothing on me at all. Because a lot of them are just lectures you just sat through, mm -hmm. and I just would leave my stuff in my car. Uh, the other one was, uh, we were having like a tabletop day at Marty's place, and Ashley cooked, and it was good, but I just like- I just suddenly was like, I got, I just got, I got to throw up. I just went to the restroom and threw up. And like Marty, like turned on music to like oh. drown it out. But everyone was clearly aware of what had happened when I came back. And I just had to convince them, like, yeah, no, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Like this is just normal. Like I, it's, it's, it's whatever. No, I'm a. Like, I, you guys don't have that. We're just like every like I don't know, like 18 months or so, you just like throw up and you don't know why. No, <laughs> that's that's my life. Usually, like, mine's from partying. But I, uh, yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I don't, I'm a like, quiet I don't, puker. I don't, I don't party. I don't get sick. I, I don't like, get I, sick. I, I just but... randomly will throw up like every 18 months and not really know what the causality relationship was. And then I just have to move on with my life. I feel fine afterwards. I've gone into public bathrooms. And like, there was like a time I just, that I just hate that I it has was, witnesses. I was with your, your brother and his husband and we were just walking down the street. And I'm like, I'm going to use the bathroom really quick. I just go into a public bathroom. Just real nonchalant. Just go in there. Just puke a few times. Come back out. It's like, all right, no. I'm good. They didn't know I was even nauseous or yeah. puke. I was so hungover. You're so stealthy. Well, it's just, it just one of those things where I'm just like, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the puke podcast. I heard, heard you guys love the tangents. Yeah, and everyone who, and everyone who doesn't rage quit a long time ago, presumably. <laughs> I mean, we're not getting really graphic with it. We're just, it's relatable. Everyone pukes, right? No, I just, I just, <laughs> no. Mean, no. <laughs> I, no, no, I, no, I mean, I mean like just, the I was just, I was just talking about tangents in general because I, 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 I had the time. We're nine minutes in. I'm so sorry, so it's everyone. Time to, it's time to get the I'm show so on the road a little bit. But the, uh, so we're about, we're gearing up to do the scavenger hunt, which I'm excited about because there's no good outcome. No. There's no, like, it's a scavenger hunt left by our dead friend, so we're, we're setting up an emotional <laughs> gut punch. But also, like, it's Echo, so we have a bunch of context for how bad this can go. Uh, we're either going to be accosted by horror stuff or Brian or some other fucked up thing, just looking for the scavenger hunt thing. Or we're gonna find something horrible when we succeed, and so this is just prime for some A plus. Like this is gonna be great. <laughs> just knowing <laughs> like Brian's horrible. out there scares me every episode. Like every yeah, episode he's we there do, every round. I just somewhere. know he's lurking back there. He's like waiting to show up. Brian is so enduring that I even know that he's just in uh, arches 
I'm like, he's not even- he's still in the sequel too. I'm like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> Brian, stop. He's real horror right there. Anyway, we walk slowly up the length of Carl's driveway, our shadows covering its entire length in the light of the sunset. Oh yeah, we're also having to confront- try to make good with Carl, who just made bad drama what- like... <laughs> he, did, he did so much, because he, he did the thing where he's like, inappropriately, uh, like... He's like on a level of being like inappropriately inebriated with friends, but then he also fucked up bad while in that. And now we have to just deal with that weird relationship afterwards where you're trying to figure out like what level of like do you acknowledge what he said? Or like, <laughs> like how, how seriously do you take it or do you try to brush this off? Which is kind of a, a version of what they do with Flynn already with his, his tantrums, but like... <laughs> It's so uncomfortable what he said. Like, never have I ever killed someone. Yeah. And they're just gonna. Oh my god. We're just meeting back up the same day real, after real he's sobered Carl. up to go on a scavenger. Uh, yeah, let's just. We'll just have to check, vibe check the room, you know? Uh, That's kind of just what you do in a situation like, like this. You're like, okay, let's just uh, let's see what yep. tomorrow's. Let's see what the next time is like. TJ's you know? used to compartmentalizing how much he hates all of his friends. <laughs> well, I, was, I was gonna be like, relatable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I love Keith. Wow. I hate all my other friends. She's only in this for the fan art. If you guys don't, if you guys stop drawing fan art of her, she's just gonna she's just gonna leave. She'll never talk to me again. <laughs> this is an entirely adversarial relationship, transactional. Yeah, off the off the offset, we like we hate each other. <laughs> Everyone's just a paid actor. I pay all my friends to like me. Bill Murray and Chevy Chase and Caddyshack. That, that's us. <laughs> We're such bad friends that I never understand any of her movie references. I know. I knew you wouldn't get that one either. <laughs> wow, I love screwball comedies from the 80s. My favorite genre. <laughs> it's just like horror comedies. Uh, our shadow is covering its entire length in, in the light of the sunset. TJ is starting to drag his feet again as we get closer to the door, and I stop to look back at him. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm good. You sure? We don't have to do this today. We can come by tomorrow. TJ shakes his head, taking a swig of water from a water bottle we'd bought from the convenience store on the way here. No, uh, I'm just a little tired. It's been a long day, so we should do, like, tense nighttime scavenger hunting now. Yeah, it's not really... <laughs> yeah. ...ideal. I wait for TJ to catch up then match his stride as we make our way up the sidewalk, then up the steps to the door. TJ doesn't do anything, instead just gripping into his water bottle, making the plastic creak. I wait another second, then reach out across TJ to press the doorbell. The faint, fancy chime emanates from behind the door for a few seconds, followed by the clopping of Carl's hooves on the wooden floor. Seems like a bad combo. There's a pause once he reaches the door, and I imagine him hesitating as he reaches for the door handle. A second later, though, it swings open, revealing a very bleary-eyed, a bleary, red-eyed ram. Carl blinks at us a few times before... Uh, Carl blinks at us a few times through the bright orange sun behind us. Finally, he steps aside, opening the door wider. Hey, guys. There's a pause as I wait to see if TJ will say anything. When he doesn't, I clear my throat and step forward to the door. Uh, hey man, you okay? Not really. I don't say anything in return, instead spreading my arms out in the cool air of the mansion. I turn around and wait as TJ steps to the doorway, the links framed by the golden sunlight the fine hairs of his fur lit up like white-hot wires. I see Carl's hand that's not on the door sort of twitch, like he's grabbing something in the air. Hey. TJ stands next to me, looking back at Carl. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that face. Yep. Prime, friendly TJ. Carl rubs vigorously. Okay. Carl rubs vigorously rubs at his arm. Yeah, I'm not insane. <laughs> Carl vigorously rubs at his arm. But there's a comma like Carl rubs vigorously rubs at his arm. 
I don't know if that stylistic choice would work either. <laughs> I mean, they're really emphasizing that it, it's very it's vigorous. so much. There's a, there's a bald spot now. Oh no. I wonder if like in, if furries get stressed, they lose like they get patchy, like you know. Maybe, or you have like a like how birds pluck out their feathers, or how dogs lose hair under duress. Yeah, or there'd be there'd probably be elements of like having like ADHD or OCD tendencies, like just like pulling out your own hair. Well, there's people who do having, that. Like, bald there's spots. issues like there there are psychological issues where people will pull out all their hair and it, they, they hate they hate it they wear, they wear wigs to cover it so they can't get access to it because they'll keep doing it like it, it's a tick mm. and it just really sucks uh listen carl pauses i get the idea that he's wanting tj to tell him that everything's okay so he doesn't have to explain anything that would definitely make things easier but he doesn't say anything just watches the ram Carl rubs behind his head for a second, looking back at the door. I'm not sure why it's so hard for him to apologize to TJ. I thought it was weird that Carl had apologized to me instead of the Lynx in the first place. Listen. Carl takes in a big, shuddery breath, blowing it out loudly. <sighs> I, I was really, really f um, messed up earlier. I wasn't thinking right. TJ continues to watch Carl silently. His ears are up, at least. Carl stutters and stumbles over a few more syllables before he continues. Uh, and uh, I just wasn't thinking straight. He scuffs the hardwood floor loudly with a hoof. And I, I don't think you did anything like that. I was just pissed off. TJ is quiet for a few more seconds, but Carl doesn't offer anything more. So, why were you angry? You just have one of those faces? Because you started to throw me a birthday party and I didn't want it. <laughs> Was that but yesterday? That, no, I, well, I mean, I would just, I would, I would just hold on to that for a long time. <laughs> Even though it's Leo's idea. But no, Carl, uh, I think Carl was feeling antagonized by TJ having all these, like, academic excellence kind of nerdy, never have I ever type things when yeah. Carl dropped out. Well, yeah, I think Carl just kind of feels like a fuck up. I get, I get the same. What he really fucked up with, too, is, uh, I think TJ had a never have I ever been in a car crash. And that's, like, a mm. bad thing with, with Carl. Yeah, they probably, they probably poked at him a little bit. I mean, I don't think TJ did that on purpose, you know? Yeah. Carl sighs, then leans his head back against the door, his horns knocking loudly against it. You said some shit that I'm ass hurt about, okay? It wasn't your fault. <laughs> ass hurt. <laughs> ass hurt is so much weirder than butt hurt, which itself is just like an odd sentence in general, but like. Ass hurt. Ass hurt. Tit dirt. Tit dirt, ass hurt, <laughs> ass hat. <laughs> I forget what it was, but McSkinny specified that tit dirt was not a reference to whatever we looked up. Well, I don't remember well, the rest well, of the conversation. I know, I know it wasn't. It's just one, yeah. of, it's one of those things where I was just like, what does this mean? We're looking up, yeah. like, origins. Like, is, is this a colloquialism we're just not aware of here in the States? Like, I don't know. Yeah. But no, this, the, that was an interesting here dynamic in, in that conversation where there's just like... There is kind of a thing in friend groups where people kind of prefer specific people in the friend group a bit and kind of neglect certain people in the friend group because it's just like a bunch of people interacting that didn't all choose each other mutually. And like, that was very much like a never have I ever where TJ was just tar directly targeting Chase with every question and not even thinking about Carl. And yeah. It's kind of like a thing that happens. And uh, so he literally didn't even register what that like, wow, everything you're saying that's like, oh, he, he targeting Chase is like, Stuff that, like, Carl is deeply and specifically ashamed of. Yeah. TJ folds his arms, looking down. Well, what... What was it I said? So he doesn't know. Carl shakes his head. Stupid shit. I mean, stupid because of me. Stuff about school, car accidents. Just brought up old stuff for me. Oh. But I don't think you ever did anything like I said. I was just being a huge dick. Sorry. His voice breaks a little at the end, and he quickly looks at the floor. 
his ears down. Oh, Carl. TJ is again quiet. I think about changing the subject now that the apology's out of the way, but TJ speaks first. Uh, thanks, Carl. And I'm sorry I bought stuff up like that. I, I'll try to remember in the future. Carl shakes his head, looking back up. Not your fault. We stand there, awkwardly, for a few seconds. I guess... I thought maybe Flynn had been saying stuff to you. That's why you said it. Uh-huh. Oh. Carl's non-denial hangs heavy in the air. I haven't seen Flynn in days, and I am wondering what he's been up to in that time. I have to ask Carl when TJ isn't around. As of now, though, I want to change the subject because things are getting awkward. So, uh, TJ had an idea about the scavenger hunt thing. Carl looks at me as if just now realizing that I'm there. The scavenger hunt? Oh, yeah, the treasure hunt. TJ scratches his arm, looking embarrassed. Sydney's treasure hunt? TJ scratches harder at his arm, looking more and more flustered, so I jump in. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we were thinking about actually doing it to maybe find some closure. I know, it sounds like a, the plot of like some movie. Like, I, you know, it's like all these friends go on a, on his l the last scavenger hunt because yeah. the other friend's dead. Like, I, it just sounds like such a... I've such seen a, a few movies a like this where there's some kind of missing person and then everyone tries to like finish that person's like mission that they were on. Yeah. Especially if they're all like middle school kids or something. We gotta do it for him. Like yeah. that kind of thing. It's a... Uh, for me, it's like, I... I get why they're doing it for a few reasons. One, like, I wouldn't... There's a lot... There's reasons they wouldn't want to interact with Flynn. And... Also, narratively, you want to be like, let's have TJ and Carl alone together instead of, like... Like, I think this game almost never wants to have to, like, manage the ensemble all at once. Because it's a nightmare. Uh, and Carl and TJ are also, like, underused characters so far that need more time to get fleshed out. But it does feel weird that we're just excluding half of the party from this big closure thing. But we do know, in, like, in Carl's route, what happened when we, when we did finally try to get the whole party back together for closure once upon a time uh, at the lake, and it immediately disintegrated. It was yeah. a horrible idea. This is not a good friend group. The only time no, they ever... No, it's not. This, this friend group only ever gets along very temporarily after they all just survive something traumatic and they're at a diner. <laughs> like, they have to be, like, cooling down from something that takes the wind out of the sails of all of their drama. Well, I get the impression this is, like, one of those friend groups that develops out of proximity. Yeah. And it's like, we live in a small town. There's, like, 30 kids in our class, like, graduating class. Like, mm -hmm. we're going to end up being friends because who else is there, you know? No, every, kinda, everybody needs to, everyone needs to move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Leo, don't <laughs> stay there forever. Carl frowns. Really? TJ stops scratching at his arm. His ears coming back up. Yeah, yeah, I, I I believe things happen for a reason. That you found it, uh, that you found it now while we're all here means something, I think. I think things happen for a reason, like Sydney being dead. <laughs> I hate I, I hate when people say things happen for a reason because of things exactly like that. I was mm -hmm. like, that's fucked up. You want to give me a reason that this horrible thing happened? Like, I'm sure you can't really think of one. Yeah. Man, I mean, it's really old. You even think of any of that, you even think any of that stuff would be out there right now? Maybe, but I guess I'm not really looking to find anything. It's just a thing we can do while we remember him. Uh, I think it's a good way to find some closure. I try to back up TJ under Carl's somewhat bewildered stare. The ram strokes his chin. I guess that sort of makes sense. I mean, if you're okay with doing it. TJ squares his stance, looking up. I am. It's been so... It's been so long feeling this way. I feel like this might be my Ooh. last chance to do something. I think that TJ needs this. Carl looks over at me. I nod, indicating I feel the same way. I don't fully understand this new direction in TJ either, but I sure as hell supported him. 
Yeah, because he's the one that specifically doesn't even, like, acknowledge any of this on uh, ongoing thing. Well, okay then. I'll go grab it. You want to just open it now? Let's... Let's go to the motel or something. With Jenna there, too. And not Flynn. Oh, we're going to incorporate Jenna now. Okay. Carl finally shuts the door before making his way to the stairs. TJ seems to deflate then, his shoulders hunching back in. That wasn't so bad. I mumble to him once I think Carl's out of earshot. Yeah, it was okay. We stand there awkwardly as we wait. The whole situation is so strange. Carl comes back with a crumpled-looking white envelope in his hands. TJ eyes it, his fur standing up on the back of his neck. So, uh, you dudes want to drive back to the motel, or...? Uh, actually, we didn't drive. Carl drops his hands to his sides. Are you f reeking serious? I can't walk in that heat. TJ did. Yeah, but it... <laughs> <laughs> we all know TJ's very fit, okay? Yeah, but he's also wearing a carpet. I know. He's in fursuit. I know, but 24 Carl is Carl, though, you know? He L doesn't get out much. Like Living that sweaty lifestyle. I tug up some of the fur on the lynx's neck to show Carl. I think, I think, I think Chase being able to do it is more of a, like, that's more of a... <laughs> He's got, dumb little, he's he, got dumb little legs, but... He, he Link walked all the way Link's here and didn't trip like, once. Yeah. Lynxes have, like, winter fur, though. Also, we did trip on the way here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we, my gosh. we kept shoulder checking TJ, and then TJ won when he I did forgot. it once. Yeah. So he, once again. Damn, Chase. Once again, Chase fell. Yes. Chase sucks. But ghosts have the thinnest fur out of the three of these, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I, if anyone has an advantage, Carl would have an advantage, and Jenna probably would, because she's got that really light tan fur that like is for, for the desert specifically yeah uh oh actually well then you know flynn flynn's like supercharged by the heat he's he's a he's a lizard he's gonna move so faster like, during the day yeah. and slower at night <laughs> where's that where's that part of the anthro he, he skitters <laughs> like you know that's why he was so good at that he was such a good sniper in the other route because the sun went down and his and his heart his heartbeat slowed <laughs> bum bum <laughs> bum bum racial passes you may say he's a cold-blooded killer <laughs> oh no it's funny because it was traumatic. <laughs> TJ actually jumps a bit and I quickly let go. I want to ask him what's wrong, but Carl keeps touching, talking. <laughs> Man, I'm going to smell like shit once we get there. The sun's almost gone anyway. Carl smirks at me. I sweat walking in the wintertime. You can take a shower at the motel. Carl blows his breath out loudly, frowning. <sighs> okay, but I'm gonna put on more deodorant before we go. The walk back isn't so bad. Carl makes it out to be a lot worse than it is with all those <laughs> gasping and wiping his face constantly. He's like, oh, <laughs> he's really dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> TJ gets a text from Jenna to meet at the diner instead of the motel, since she's going there for dinner anyway. Once we walk in, Carl lets out a gasping groan of relief that turns a, a few heads. So, and they have three characters to voice. Oh, because Janice will be here. Oh, right. four if Janice is here. I, I meant the uh, the employee. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Jenna looks up from a corner booth and waves at us. I wave back and start making my way over. Going to the bathroom. Gotta wipe my pits. Thanks for the announcement. <laughs> Could just laugh. It's fine. Yeah, we're in a place that serves food, Carl. We don't need to announce why we're going to the restroom. There's a reason why you close the door before you do anything in there. You don't really need to specify each time. Boy, I gotta drop off the doggies at the pool. <laughs> oh my god. People that say stuff like that, I just, oh my gosh, I don't tolerate that. Get right out. Right I need out. people to know that I am pooping specifically. <laughs> it's not as bad as TV dinner, but it's like on that. List of like, like, why do you like this? I'm like, like, for the love of God, please stop. <laughs> no one wants this. You're only making yourself laugh. You're being annoying. Yeah. 
TJ makes a sour face as he follows me to the table. Jenna scoots in we can, so we can sli uh, slide in next to her. So what's this all about? Uh, Carl found a treasure hunt that Sydney made. Jenna toys with her brown leather purse, uh, staring at it. Okay, like a map or something? A letter. What are you going to do with it? Well, I look over at TJ, but he doesn't say anything. Instead, looking out the window at the sunset. We're thinking about doing it. <laughs> You're thinking about fucking? <laughs> You're thinking about going on the treasure hunt? Yeah. I mean... Jenna pauses, clearly trying to choose her words carefully. I mean, would there be anything left of it at this point? It would have to be at least 11 years old by now. Maybe it was in a lunchbox. Buried under the ground. Yeah, yeah like a like a t time capsule. That'd be cool. I, mean, I think it's worth looking at, at least. Yeah. I understand that this is like emotionally upsetting for everyone, but I think it's... I, I, I think it'd I would be, be more I, sad if you didn't do it. I'd be really curious. Yeah. Jenna looks over at TJ, studying his reaction. He doesn't give her anything, though. Just staring out the window. I spread my hands out on the table, instantly regretting it as I feel the grease slide around <laughs> under the pads. <laughs> Janice! I hate all unexpected feelings on surfaces. I was gonna say, like, Just in your enjoy. heart, yeah. I hate love. <laughs> Ever want to touch the table at a restaurant? I'm always iffy about, like, like the uh, our, our countertop by the fridge is just a hazard of like weird sticky spots every time. There's those new ones just arrive, <laughs> and I'm always nervous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I had, I had one where I was like, oh, I left a oh a, a little piece of like hot water must have escaped while I was like stirring, and I'm gonna wipe it up, and then it's like. Like just thick syrupy streak of just ah, uh, it's on my hands now. I'm like ah, uh. I mean, for <laughs> that's the not record, what I thought it was. Like I wipe down the counter every time after I cook because that's how I was raised. Yeah, but no one else does I that. I don't trust surfaces ever. They're all they're all the devil's playthings. <laughs> no, the the one that throws me off is when you put your hand on the counter and it's like grainy, and you're like, what? Is this sugar? Like, what is? Why is this here? <laughs> Dude, what is this? How did this get here? Perhaps worst of all, we now have like a, a coffee machine where it just it just isn't pourable half the time. Have you have you has this happened to you? The it's not pourable. Our uh, we we have a a coffee maker where the the kettle what is it called? The carafe. Is that what the the thing is called? Yep. It doesn't have <laughs> like it doesn't have any kind of lip. Oh, so, that's stupid. Why they do that to us? You, have you not noticed? You, have you not? You you pour coffee like when you pour coffee like. Maybe I'm just good. You still. I have never noticed this. It, it doesn't have any kind of lip or spout or whatever at the end. It just has an opening, and so if you just don't have the magic touch, it'll like just me. fucking dribble down the side of the thing and then pour outside of your cup. Huh. It keeps happening to me and John. But apparently, and like Eric brags it doesn't happen to him. But I'm like, what the fuck? I'm just pouring coffee, and then I I, I put it out over my coffee thing, like uh, over my mug, and I pour it. And instead of going in the mug, a ton of it just runs down the side of the device and pours on the on the fucking Maybe counter, and I have to wipe it up after. Pouring fast enough. Maybe they should make a fucking thing that works. I mean, I agree with that. <laughs> like, part. what the fuck? <laughs> Why did they make it like that? Like, we're so sleek and cool and unusable. Okay. Yeah, no. Why would you do this? To it's me? definitely design over function, which so is yeah. I mean, what's the fucking point? I've been wiping up a lot of coffee lately. It's driving me fucking crazy. <laughs> I uh, one of my one of my teachers in college, cause I go to school. She was telling a story about how uh, she didn't know what that thing was called either, and so she the carafe. Uh, yeah, she was she was pregnant, and so her doctor was asking her how much coffee she drinks. She's like, I drink uh, a glass cup of coffee every day, and he's like, Oh, like how big of a cup? He's like, She's like, No, the like the cup, like mm -hmm. like the cup, like the coffee cup. And he's like, What do you mean? And she's like, The thing, like you put it, you put the water in it, you pour it, <laughs> and then it's and she, he's like, You and he like walks. To, I guess he walked to the break room and came back with the carafe and was like you mean yeah. this you drink one whole of these every day and she's like yeah i drink i drink a, like a cup and he's like each one of these lines is a actual cup like in, <laughs> in terms of measurement and she's like oh and he's like yeah no that's too much 
<laughs> Unless. <laughs> well, I just, you know, studies show that drinking a lot of coffee is actually really good for you. But maybe... Uh, but if, 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 you're, if you're pregnant, probably. Probably not. Yeah. You can't do anything fun if you're pregnant. No roller no. coasters, you no, have, no you sushi. You have to give up on being alive for almost a year. You can't drink booze unless you want to be a horrible parent. And then the child is born and you have new problems for the next, like, two or three years. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's like a dog, but much worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a dog, and I get to I get to drink as much so coffee much as I want. <laughs> <laughs> I spread my hands out on the table instantly. Yep, the grease. We're seeing it as more of a closure sort of thing, a send off. We're not really expecting to find something. It's his Sydney's grave. <laughs> I was gonna say like a skull or something. <laughs> Like, Sydney's but, been killing people the whole time. Him being dead is actually a miracle because he was going to keep on killing. It would be really weird as if this, the treasure hunt actually led to, like, Samuel. Or Brian's grave of dead people in the, the mine. In the mine. That'd be a distressing treasure hunt. But, like, what if there was actually, like, like Sydney knew all along where Samuel was buried and the family curse. <laughs> And Chase finds it, and he's like, "Why do I feel that, like this is familiar? Like in another timeline? <laughs> like I'm only going, like I'm this. just going in circles." Yeah. <laughs> TJ finally looks back at us. He made it for us, so I feel like we should do it for him. Hmm. Jenna stares back down at her purse. I guess Flynn won't be involved. No. And Leo? He's going to be busy for most of the week. I don't think he'd really want to anyway. That's convenient. Why is that? Why is he busy this time? Because, well, in the Leo route, it seemed very much implied that he was getting in very big trouble with his family for just disappearing uh, from work the entire week. Yeah, but this time he, he he doesn't prioritize Chase enough to ditch out on his family this time. Well, we 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 did we ditched out on him. <laughs> we we have not hung out with Leo this route or in uh in Carl's route and so on. What a nice change. Whereas Jenna's route opens with, like, the big conflict, and so he's, like, trying to get us, but also he's running from the cops. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? TJ looks like he's trying to choose his words carefully. He pretends like it never happened. I don't want to bring it back up for him. No one says anything else until Carl shows back up, the fur on his head and face a little wet. Hey, Jenna. Carl. Jenna nods at him as he sits across from me. He reaches across the table, snatching up a menu from the metal holder in the center. I'll pay if anyone wants something. I'm a rich kid, blah, blah, blah. Jenna curls a lip in disgust, but I'm starving, so I start browsing the menu as well. Jenna. <laughs> Just chill Jenna, for a minute. Jenna, take the... It's free food! <laughs> God. That's nice. Go Say thank you. Going into this whole thing, I underestimated how much Jenna just doesn't like Carl, like, so severely. Like, because we didn't know going into this, like, what Echo is like. I was re I was immediately ready for the idea that the town just fucks with people on some level, because I'm like, something's gonna go wrong, like, this, something's gonna get worse. So I was like, when Jenna was characterized as being so, like, almost paternal, or parental, I mean, uh, maternal, uh, and then was just going off so hard on Carl, like, unfairly in, her, in his route when he was being ambushed by the party. I was like, what the fuck is up with Jenna here? Like, is she getting, like, echoed or something? Because it was also the same scene where we just we just saw Duke. So, like, just shit was going down. Like, is the town fucking with us? But it just, it just seems like she genuinely just resents him. I, I think resentment is, is the right word. Um, it's, uh, I'm trying to think... Okay, like, I, I'm trying to think of, like, an archetype of this, because the, what it reminds me of is, it's, like, sometimes if you're kind of, like, as uptight as Jenna is, and, like, a little bit wound up and, like, always kind of, like, I think she, I think she's, like, always stressed because she's, like, trying to do good, you know? You look at someone like Carl, who just kind of, like, skates by being a slacker, and not, he doesn't have, he has, like, no fire under his ass at all. I get kind of like Jenna sometimes, where that like, annoys me. Yeah. But but never enough for me. Like at that point, it, you look inwards at yourself and you're like, the reason I feel this way is because I'm so anxious, 
and I can't yeah. relax. So I'm, je- I'm basically jealous of this person who can just be like, I was thinking of TJ from Recess because there's a whole episode where like somebody hates him for that exact reason and he doesn't understand it. But it's like because he, he like everything just works out his way and he never has to try and he's just charming and things just work. I mean, Carl doesn't have like a ton going for him, but he doesn't like seem to really care or find that to be like an immense issue. He's got like self-image issues, but he gets he gets by. I, I was gonna say like I'm pretty sure he's depressed about this and like not well, that, going, that, doing great. That's what Jenna needs <laughs> internally. To, Jenna being like a, a psych major or whatever should be aware of that. That's the thing is like yeah. if she knew that. If she thought about that more, I think she would resent Carl a lot less because, like, I've had total conversations like this where it's like, you not being stressed makes me more stressed. I have to stress because you're not stressed. And like, it's like, he's luck- he's, but secretly he's I am stressed. And he's I'm someone like, that's, okay. like, really lucky. He has this, like, giant safety net because he's not doing well otherwise. Yeah. And so he would just be in a much worse situation if that stuff wasn't working out for him. I mean, I think Jenna has, like, the I'm going to throw you into the pool, like, you better swim kind of attitude. Yeah. Which doesn't always work. She's had to deal with this thing where she had to escape her whole background, and she has to. She's just always confronted with how inherently unfair the world just is from person to person, even in the same town and even from similar like backgrounds. It's like even within this friend group, nobody has a, a situation similar to Jenna's. Yeah, and that's just what the world is. So it's I get every why she- individual person has a completely different uh, scenario they're dealing with where. Like, like economically, even everyone in this household has like a completely different scenario they're going, they're dealing with, and like where they are in life, and how like, like, like how their future's looking, and how like it's they have to bleak. navigate their specific like economics and everything. It's just, a, it's just weird. Yeah, no, it's a uh, um, people get protagonist syndrome, and they forget to think about like how to put yourself in other people's heads and kind of like imagine what it could be like to be them. Yeah. And Jenna, like I said, being a psych major should be able to look at Carl and understand that because like he's suffering for sure. She just is, she's too focused on her blinding resentment. It's just, it's bad to resent other people for what is essentially like an adversary relationship created by the system itself. Yeah, like you're we're we're poised in a competitive way against each other, and there's like this measuring again your lives against each other aspect that isn't a fair way to look at any of the people involved because none of them made the system what it is or made that re- like the comparative relationship between all the different people the way the way it is. It just is that way, and there are things to blame there. And things to resent there, but the other people are not the correct thing. I mean, sometimes like it de- obviously depends per situation. Like sometimes you have a reason to resent someone; they're making active decisions. But if it's just like yeah. the result of the society in which you live, it's not like their fault. There's a lot of people who are born rich and do completely well, and like I'm like fucking struggling. But it's yeah. like I don't, I don't hate them unless they're assholes about it. You know? Yeah. Then, or they then, specifically then, screwed you over in some way. Yeah. Because there are ways where, like, seeing YouTuber drama and all that shit all the time, like, there are people who <clears throat> specifically enrich themselves by screwing over other people directly. But, like, like, for example, like, this household, like, everybody just, like, goes outside and just, in, in a vacuum, just makes a living in a completely different context, as if we're in different worlds from each other. <laughs> and, yeah. and they don't interact in any real way. Like, there is no overlap. It's just, they're non-interactive things. I don't know, it's phrased strangely. We're all aliens to each other. (laughs) TJ goes back into staring out the window, and I can see his ears twitching around. So, uh, where's this treasure hunt thing? Carl looks up and sees that Jenna's staring at him. Uh Huh? Oh, I have it. I'm gonna order real quick, though, if Chase is ready. I nod, and Carl waves at his menu at Janice, who quickly bustles our way with a tray of glasses of, of water. She's wearing pants now. <laughs> There's definitely still something off about her. She's wearing pants now. <laughs> <laughs> what an update. I know. So these things you have to check in on. Her eyes are wide, her smile more like a grimace, as she sets down our glasses and straws. She takes our orders well enough, though, and Jenna waits patiently as Carl and I order a meal and TJ gets a smoothie. Carl methodically tears off one end of the wrapper and his straw before he blows on the other end, shooting the rest of the wrapper at me. 
I flinch and try to catch it, failing as it falls to the floor. Jenna cl clears her throat loudly. <clears throat> so, where is it? Carl looks at her, the straw still in his mouth. Huh? Oh, right. Carl reaches into his pocket and then pulls out the envelope. He pushes it onto the table, face up. There's a writing in black... Uh, there's writing in black marker on the front. Treasure hunt, number seven. Treasure hunt. We all stare at it. Only seven? He didn't make that many. Or maybe they're really elaborate. Or maybe this one was just never used. They skipped eight. They skipped it, yeah. Uh, should I read it? Carl sets a, ha a hand down on the letter. Or someone else. Carl's eyes briefly flick over to TJ, then quickly look back down at the letter. TJ's hand comes up, then surreptitiously scratches at an ear before letting it fall back into his lap. Not ready for that word. I was gonna say that, like that, that never, was kind of a tricky one. I feel like I've never seen that one. I've, I don't I've heard it. Think, I don't think I've ever seen it written before. I don't think I don't know what that means. I don't think I've heard that before. Like that word's a trip. Surreptitiously. <laughs> surreptitiously. Surrepti surreptitiously. Time to Google it. We're gonna properly understand the implications of this scene, whether it likes it or not. You can't hide from us, grammar. Um, in a way that attempts to avoid notice or attention, secretively. Ah. So unnoticed that it was narrated. It does seem appropriate that TJ open it, but if he doesn't want to... Carl looks just as hesitant, so I finally reach out and gently slide it out from under his hand. I can read it. No one objects, so I open it carefully, not wanting to rip anything as I pry the adhesive apart. A chill goes up my spine for some reason. A strange... Surreal vision comes to my mind's eye of inky blackness leaking out of the envelope, spilling slowly across the table. The death note. I can feel it, too, like a cold draft is wafting from inside. I pause, feeling an emptiness in my chest. What the hell? I give my head a small shake, breaking out of the, out of the trance. I guess it's only natural I feel this way. That's Sidney's handwriting on a letter sealed after he licked it. He loved making these treasure hunts. It's really sad, so it makes sense that I'd feel this sudden drop in mood. I swallow as I continue to pry it open, the feeling getting worse and worse as I do. When it's finally fully opened, the feeling slowly subsides. Tension in the air seems to melt away too, like the whole town just let out a sigh of relief or he just released the curse I, l I look up for a moment at the others wondering if they're feeling the same way it's hard to tell if they're all looking intently it's hard to tell as they're all looking intently down at their at my hands I quickly look down again and stick my fingers inside feeling a piece of paper catch on a pad gently I press down on it and slide, slowly slide it from the envelope. It's bright white copy paper. <laughs> well, I, I just a mess today. Yeah, it's bright white copy paper, folded once in half. It's been creased so long that it's starting to part at the fold, in the middle part, so that the edges are barely holding on together. Black blotches bleed through the paper, probably written with the same thick marker that was used for the envelope. I gently unfold it, not wanting to rip it apart more than it already has been. The big blocky black letters were, were big on the alliteration yeah. here. <laughs> it's throwing me. Black, black blotches, blotches bleed. bleed pro uh, paper probably written with... <laughs> Bl big blocky black letters are sloppy and childish. Even though it's only a few sentences, it covers the entire page. As kids do. Yeah. The last few words trail <laughs> off into a tiny, almost illegible scroll. <laughs> when you overestimate your room, when you like, I don't yeah. like, oh, like you're you're writing the sentence and you realize at the last minute you're like, oh no, I'm gonna write. You're like, sorry, it's smaller and smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller. 
It droops off down the side of the paper as Sydney realizes he'd run out of room at the end. Okay. Um... I clear my throat, then start reading aloud. Welcome to treasure hunt number seven. This is the biggest one so far, and it took a long time. So no cheating this time. I'm talking about you, Carl and Chase. No skipping steps. Yeah, losers. First clue. These things fly really high. It's in their home with my comb. Honey, bees. It's in their home with my comb. So it's bad grammar because it's a child. Yes. I'm just like, what the fuck? It's, it's in there. Like yeah, it's the wrong, it's the wrong there. Chase, you don't have to do this one. I know you hate it. You'll see if you, you'll see if you figure it out. Chase doesn't <laughs> like bees. Good luck, guys. Sid. I feel my throat catch up just a little as I stared down at his name. He always wanted to go by Sid, but it never stuck, so none of us ever did. <laughs> everyone just wanted a specific name and everyone just ignored him. Uh, it's like how no. my mom wanted people to call me Stevie and no one ever did. Yeah. And now if it happens, it just it feels weird. But it's worse because he most wanted people call it. me Steph. <laughs> like, we go by TJ and, and, uh, and Jenna... But Sid didn't get his way. Well, all you gotta do is just, like, whenever you go someplace new, you start a new job, just tell them your name something different. Yeah. The secret is to lie. Yeah. It just didn't suit him. I look back up at the others. Carl is staring at the paper, and TJ's looking out the window again. Jenna has a hand up to her mouth, staring as well. Wow. Then she wipes at her eyes, and I look away. <clears throat> I guess I never really thought about how this might affect Jenna. She and Sydney never really got along because of the way he, he treated TJ. But still, he was just a kid, like the rest of us. Carl lets out a ragged cough. Uh, the whole cheating thing was totally you, Chase, not me. I look up at Carl, raising a brow. You're the one that told me to do it. Carl smirks. And you're the one that did it. What did you do? TJ asks quietly from his corner, finally looking away from the window. Well, Sydney liked to reuse certain hiding spots. I mean, there's only so many places he could use. Are there? I know, I know you like, like- It's the whole town. Yeah. It's <laughs> a lot of wilderness. Yeah, and Chase went straight to Sydney's mailbox and ruined the whole thing like a boss. We put it in his mailbox. It's it's like a glass onion. Yeah, it's like the best he could. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just solving it in five minutes. I was like eight. Turns out it was the last spot, and he got the the prize. Carl makes finger quotes around the last word. It's funny because I did that before it even told me to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of those plastic clapper things we used to get in elementary school for reading a lot with the little hands. Like, and then you shake it, and he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was so mad. Yeah. I remember dropping on the ground because of how lame it was. Oh, you're so mean. <laughs> oh my gosh, Chase. I solved it in five minutes, and also your prize was stupid, and you're stupid. Oh, what an idiot. I also remember Sydney crying, but I'm not gonna bring that yeah, up. Yeah, because you're fucking mean. Carl seems to have at least lightened the mood, though Jenna stopped wiping her. Oh, mo lighten the mood, though. And Jenna stopped wiping at her tears. Eyes. Nailed it. <laughs> Listen, sometimes I restart just to try to get the cadence right, because I'm like, the whole momentum was wrong. <laughs> I'm starting to think TJ was right about this whole closure thing. I know what he's talking about for this one, though. I tapped the paper with a finger. Yeah. It's the birdhouse. A, 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 the comb, though, is this comb in there? I thought like it was a honeycomb. Oh, I thought it was. Well, I thought it was a bee because of the comb part. But he did say it's in their home with my comb, like my comb. At I think it says at home with my comb. At, they're in their home with my comb. 
These things fly really high. It's in their home with my comb. Is this a fucking comb in a birdhouse? He put his comb in a birdhouse? What does that mean, Sydney? I don't yeah, I don't know what the, the comb line means. I don't think about birds though. Birdhouse? Where is that? The forest. PJ sits up straighter, ears up as well. Why do you okay, sorry, other thing. Why do you put a birdhouse in a forest? Every tree is a house for a bird. <laughs> well, it's just a nice little shelter. They don't have to build it. It attracts birds. Yeah, but usually that's why you put it near your house so you can experience the birds. Maybe his house is by the forest. Maybe, yeah. The birdhouse is on one of those trees close to the road. Oh. Well, I never went in there because of all the shit. Sorry, uh, the stuff that would get in my fur. TJ looks back out the window. The sun gone now, though the clouds in the sky are still tinged red. You guys want to do it tonight? Yeah, let's go do that in the woods at night. That's yeah. smart, guys. <laughs> Who knows what we'll meet? <laughs> yeah, what we'll meet. Exciting Henderson monstrosities. Here, let's go. Really? It's getting kind of late and we still gotta eat. Carl looks eagerly at the front counter, through the small rectangle, through the small rectangle that led to the kitchen. We can use Chase's car. Besides, it might be kind of fun in the dark. All right, there. We're going to remember that later. TJ adds the last bit meekly, which is not where I went with it. Um, hell no. As long as you guys know where it is, it shouldn't be a problem. I gently fold the letter back up and start tucking it back into the envelope. Um, what was... What did he mean by saying you didn't have to do this one, Chase? That's also why I thought it was bees. Yeah. I look up at TJ, then back down at the letter as I gently press the lid of the envelope closed. I th thought I saw something and I got scared one time. It was a long time ago, though. At least, that's what I think he was talking about. Jenna clears her throat, seeming to have collected herself. I think I remember that. My parents told me about it. I frown. Really? I didn't like the idea of that. What did you see? I shrug. A person in the trees. A hanging person. Oh. TJ shudders. So, hell fucking no to going there tonight, then. Sorry for the F word, TJ. It's fine. I saw a lot of things as a kid. I'm not going to tell him how I'm definitely still scared of that place. Besides, TJ looks really eager to start this, so I'm not going to ruin it for him. But really, that's not what's bothering me right now. I look down at my hands, and I try to work out a timeline in my head. When was it that that incident happened in the forest? I thought I'd been 10 at the time, since that was when I started going to the psychiatrist. And I started going because of that. But that would be impossible, because... Because Sid would have been dead. Is, I think, the implication. Oh, uh, yeah. Here we are. A plate with a massive burger and steak fries lands in front of my face. Ooh, I, I do like me some steak fries. The big coyote sets a smoothie down for TJ, and an even bigger veggie burger down for Carl. Hey, Janice. Is Julian working today? Janice smiles at TJ. No, dear. He's only here when I'm not. He'll be in tomorrow if you're looking to find him. Okay, thanks. Janice then clutches her tray to her chest and watches us for a moment. Listen, Chase and TJ, why don't you come by my house again when you get the chance? It's a good thing that Carl got a veggie burger, because that means that she's not eating Julian right now. <laughs> Did what, what if Julian was only in there for like that one conversation and he's just dead now? No. <laughs> this is one scene. Thanks for your support, Patreon backer. Uh, you're dead now. <laughs> yeah, he's like, dang it, why didn't I get a whole leading role like, uh, yeah. like Kunzu? After, yeah, after Kunzu and, and Raven 
but a, yeah, especially especially Kudzu and uh, Mike have such a large role in their yeah. routes, and then like this guy just has one scene and dies. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. Uh, he didn't pledge enough. <laughs> I mean, top five or something. I have no idea how they were selected or how this this worked exactly. But the uh, yeah, it's like it's quite the thing to promise and like kind of like shackle yourself to. Is here's an entire bonus character you have to manage for like an entire route that's supposed to be like this deeply personal, traumatic narrative is involving this tightly linked group of people, and there's always like this weird bonus guy well, that it, may or may not mesh with that particular route at all. What I'm kind of like, what I'm imagining. Like so, what if hypothetically somebody was it was like your biggest backer, but the character that they that is their persona is so not suited to the story at all, where it's like it's like some okay. What if it was like 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 a rainbow, sparkly Lisa Frank style leopard with gigantic tits, <laughs> like huge, huge, insanely like hentai style ones. It's like straight out. And like just a character that's wider than they are, and tall, she's like, like insane ten proportions. feet high, and <laughs> like has knives for fingers or something. Like, what if it was just like circle? Like, you're, you're just like, hmm. We need to just rein that in a They're little bit. Circle with a cyborg arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What if like part robot or like <laughs> you just kind of have to be like, hey, so um, they have a sentient not, tail. Not that one. Like, can, do you have another one? <laughs> like a talking snake tail. I mean, Kud- I mean, whenever Kudzu talks to me, it's it's pretty clear that like he primarily has a completely different character than Kudzu that he pr- they primarily uses. I don't even know if Kudzu was like a character that they used before much or, do you or think anything. They made Kudzu or for what, I, yeah. I don't know how that worked exactly. So, there's a lot of people just have like a bunch of characters. Like there's websites ma- meant just for managing all of your characters, like as a roster. Keeping them all straight, <laughs> like it's like a Pokemon team. Especially since so many artists sell uh, adoptables, mm-hmm. where you like design characters and sell them off for like a hundred dollars or something as like a group. You'll often see like a roster of like four characters that have the same silhouette but different like colored patterns to kind of like turn them out. Honestly, I don't, I don't fully get it. I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I don't, I don't the... collect characters, but some people like you'll you'll find sometimes like. Uh, is it the playpen is where they keep all the adoptables? Where you, like, where, that's, I think maybe the website. I'm trying to remember, but like, sometimes somebody's FA is just like, here's their fucking 500 characters. They're like, there's like no consistency, whatever, at all. Like, to the point where you'd, you'd be questioned. Like, if if it was for the art style changing constantly, you would think that they were an artist because, like, when somebody draws somebody, when 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 you see like 500 characters on your page, you think that they're drawing those characters and not not co- using them because like somebody's. Yeah, like somebody's FA that's like their page for their art that they're receiving. Usually it's like one or two characters over and over again because it's the characters that they have. Mm -hmm. But some people have like 500 characters and I I don't get it. (laughs) Well, I'd like, you know, I I, I think that the... so Okay, the adoptable thing's really cute. There's been a couple of times where not for the purpose of having it as a persona. In fact, usually the ones I I see are like they're um, non-anthropomorphic. But it'll be like, you know, like fantasy creatures... And it's, it's cute to, like... Like, some of them come with a little certificate and everything. It's really, really cute. <laughs> uh, it's just fun. But, um... Or, 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 honestly, I kind of feel the same way about it as, like... They have the tattoo artists do that with their flash sheets. Where it's, like, once you buy it, it's, like, they have a big sold mark on it. But they have, like... You can pick one of these. And, basically, you can get it tattooed on yourself. Not by me, but by a person that will do this for you. Yeah. And you, you, you pay me for, like, a tattoo ticket. And you get to use this design on your body. Like, it's cool. And then they get rid of it. So you don't have like duplicate tattoos yeah, out there exactly. in the world. Exactly. Although, but honestly, people do steal stuff like that. I think that's immoral. People just, in the art community frown on that very much. Just five hundred people that all have Calvin peeing on them. That poor, <laughs> that poor guy, Bill Watterson. He didn't want that. No. But um, and that's very not a part of Calvin's character. It's really contradictory. But you know, anyways, um. No, I think the fun of a, of a persona is designing it yourself. I mean, you might not be good at art, but at least, like, coming up... You can have someone draw it for you, but, like, all the concepts that I think, like... It's it's fun to, like, choose all those things yourself. I just... I find... I find the premise that there are guest characters in these routes so fascinating, because, like... When they... When they started this, they made... They probably didn't know the kind of, like, level of, like... What's the word? Uh, 
notoriety that the story was going to oh. have in the fandom overall and like the level this was going to hit to so it, it might have started off as like oh yeah i was gonna do write this fun little horror story and like in sort of like a almost like an audience like commission sort of thing we're like we'll work you in fun cameo and all that and like didn't quite know what they're getting themselves into and it's like uh, here's raven like the the person says that they should just be like kind of friendly and flirty and that's just, just their character just work they them ma- in they make a comment about otter sucking dick yeah <laughs> And I, th- I think that's what they said. Basically, it's just like the the creator was just the the owner of the character just said that they should just be like friendly and flirty or something, and they just had to like work with that. But then like there's clearly like a leveling up that happened where like you get to Kudzu, and Kudzu is specifically like this like romantic rival for uh, Leo that fo- that directly like foils him as a character and is so broke like tightly woven into the narrative that you can't take him out. And then Micah is almost like it's, it's kind of yikesy where I'm, i almost wonder like how much they like discussed what was going to happen with that character because like the, here, it's like here's this oh you're oc oh yeah here's the uh the extreme extremely sketchy underage sex that they were involved in <laughs> and they're and also like uh at that point people were probably like starting to get the specific kind of like discourse and the, the people that are like really into leo kind of like stuff was probably already starting at that point because of the release order being like it was carl's route then leo's route when they were writing these routes so like when jenna's route comes out and and like are not like not exactly how it works but like in a way like kind of like retcons a character into leo's past that changes of the context of his relationship with chase and also like affects this character that people uh, we're probably already like going after a bit in various ways. I wonder how that like recontextualized things, or how like yeah, how Micah might, was received in might that find context. Micah would be contentious for that reason, because like, oh, you fucked the the my wolf boyfriend that I <laughs> fantasize about every day. Like, I hate. I wonder him. about that stuff. It's really it's interesting. Like, because yeah, like Raven is almost kind of like a bystander. But with the next two characters, they made them so incorporated into the plot that I almost, I just wonder, like, that's, like, that's has, so like, a fucking rock garden, and he has an ex-boyfriend that's dead, that's, that's a rabbit, and it's, like, it's super elaborate. So I wonder how much they actually got from the the creator of Kudzu about Kudzu, or how much of it they filled in themselves, you know? Yeah, and then this guy is also here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about him at all. I've, yeah, Julian is around. <laughs> It's almost like sub Raven levels so far of like I almost wonder if he'll even have any role because I because it does feel like a big thing to chain yourself to like eventually you'd feel like you'd want to make right routes that these characters don't like you, you at some point you'd probably want to write these characters in a context where you don't have to deal with like a guest character being along for the ride the whole well, time. It would suck if you're like if you're like oh man like I hate this guy. Do I have to include him. <laughs> like I mean obviously I'm not saying that the creators felt any specific way about any of these guys, but I was going to say like hypothetically if someone like inserts a character that really just doesn't suit that route or you're just like, man, it's like how art artists doing commissions like just like certain characters way more than other characters. Like sometimes yeah. they just don't like this character and they're just getting through it. Yeah, they're like, "Ugh, fine." <laughs> Anyway, we're being roped into more bullshit. Thank, yeah. Thanks, Janice. Is TJ going to stand up for himself? Let's, <gasps> let's see. I look up at Janice and see that she's got a strange look on her face. Confused and worried looking. <clears throat> What's wrong, Janice? TJ's voice is full of concern. Uh, did we do something wrong? No, no. You did everything wonderfully. I just want to have a talk about the way I acted the past few days. I was going to say, she probably hasn't been home. She left for work, and we went from there to Carl's to here, so she wouldn't know how good our grave was. <laughs> Just the obvious grave. <laughs> Janice looks out, lets out an exasperated sounding laugh. Not really sure what came over me. Just now realizing how strange it all was. She glances at Carl. But we can talk about it later, in person. Enjoy your dinner. Like, I'll make cookies and lemonade again. <laughs> definitely not get sick this time. I also she, won't creep on you, because you should definitely be in a creep. She bustles off, tray still held against her body. Carl watches her go, stuffing a few fries into his mouth. What was that about? Uh... 
The way Janice had looked at Carl makes me think she doesn't want him knowing about what had happened. I think she just feels bad for making us work so much. I look over meaningfully at TJ. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. TJ starts sucking on his straw. Well, she should. Jenna's sitting back in the booth, having taken out her brush to start grooming the fur on her face and head. I inconspicuously slide my plate a little further away from her. Well, once we finish, we can go get my car and head to the forest. As I lift my burger and take a bite, I look over at the counter where I see Janice leaning over her notepad. Her shoulders are shaking, and it takes me a moment to realize she's crying. Aww. And we're going to leave it on that. <laughs> Not going to say nothing to her. No, what's going on with Janice?